This is lesson 8.3. It's about graphing rational functions and properties of rational functions. So I have three examples here of rational functions. What makes them rational is that we have um, an equation on top of the fraction bar and a separate equation on the bottom of the fraction bar, and both equations have x's in them. If you graph these various rational functions, you can get many shapes. We just have three examples here. And any graph of a rational function can be described as continuous or discontinuous. This first graph is continuous because it has no breaks in it. It goes from left to right, from negative infinity to positive infinity. This second graph is discontinuous because it has this hole in it. This spot right here, we describe that as a hole. We could also call it a point of discontinuity. The third graph has actually two branches, and we have seen graphs that look like this before with our reci reciprocal function family. This is a discontinuous graph also because we have this break in right here in the domain. So these are just three examples. There are many other examples of what rational functions can look like. So if a graph has a point of discontinuity, then that point of discontinuity can be described as a hole, and that would be a removable discontinuity because we could describe a point that would fill the hole so in the case of this graph here in the middle, if we just said um, when x equals negative 2, y equals 1, that would fill the hole. So that's a removable point of discontinuity. In this third graph on the right, this would be a non-removable discontinuity because there's no way to define this function so that the two lines would meet up. So we end up with an asymptote there instead of a hole. So if your numerator, pq, and your denominator, p of x, and your denominator, q of x, have no common zeros, then the function has vertical asymptotes at the zeros of the denominator. For example, in this one, we have... Um, a common factor, numerator and denominator. So this would not be a vertical asymptote. This would be a hole. So we would say there's a hole at x equals 2. But this other 0 to the denominator does not have a matching factor in the numerator. So that ends up being an asymptote at x equals negative 3. Another example right here. The numerator and denominator have no common factors, so both of the factors of the denominator give us vertical asymptotes. So we will have asymptotes at x equals 2 and at x equals 3. So we'll have two vertical asymptotes for this graph and no holes because there are no matching factors, numerator to denominator. So this one, the numerator actually factors, so we would factor that as x plus 1 and x minus 1. And so we have a matching factor, numerator to denominator. So at the point x equals negative 1, there will be a hole. And that's the only 0 to the denominator. The 0 to the numerator does not give us holes or asymptotes. It gives us... Um, actually gives us um, intercepts. So next we're going to talk about horizontal asymptotes and that'll be in the next video.